What is a scientific fact that absolutely blows your mind? If you put one of every animal in a bag and then pick one out you have a 1 in 5 chance in picking a beetle. There are 8 times as many atoms in a teaspoonful of water as there are teaspoonfuls of water in the Atlantic Ocean. Slime molds don't have brains or nervous systems but somehow retain information and use it to make decisions. Even more crazy is that they confuse with another individual and share the information. The WOW signal came from a planet slash bit in space 17,000 light years away. It emitted a signal 30 times stronger than anything we can make today. It lasted for an entire 71 seconds, was on 1444 Hz, frequency of hydrogen, most abundant thing in the universe, and we couldn't find the signal again after pointing to the same spot. Some forms of anesthesia don't numb you to pain they make you forget that you felt it. The reason for near weightlessness on the International Space Station is nothing to do with low gravity in space. It's still very close to the massive ball of wet rock that we live on, and still experiences 89% of the gravity that we do. It's just that the ISS is in, almost, free fall, so everything is accelerated by, almost, the same force. It also experiences air resistance, as do most satellites. There isn't a hard boundary between air and no air, it tapers off. Oh, and the ISS is already seven years past its original life expectancy. In nine years, it will be decommissioned and put on a controlled course back to Earth, smashing it down into the Pacific Ocean. Solids and liquids don't burn, only their vapors and gases. That's why you can't just throw a huge log on the fire and have it burn. You need to haul its temperature up until the surface starts pyrolysis and turning into a gas, which then burns. Edit, good example is gasoline, petrol versus diesel. Petrol produces vapors at quite low temps so you can throw a match on it and ignite them. Diesel does not, so you can't light it by flicking a match into a pool of it. It's the vapors that burn, not the liquid, solid. The fact that time works different in the universe. The fact that it is faster or slower in some parts of the galaxy just blows my mind, looking at you interstellar. A recently discovered vine can mimic nearby artificial plants, modifying the size, shape and color of its leaves to match them. The only plausible explanation is that plants can see. Jellyfish don't die natural deaths. Like, they can just revert back to a young form and start the cycle all over. Edit, as many people have already mentioned, it's just one particular species. When you dream, one portion of your brain creates the story, while another part witnesses the events and is really shocked by the plot twists. Approximately 99.85% of all the mass in the solar system is concentrated in the Sun. You can fit all the planets, Pluto included, between the Earth and Moon. When the pyramids were built, there were still some woolly mammoths roaming the Earth. If you and a friend flew to a black hole and parked at a safe distance and he jumped out, you would see him fly towards the black hole, then freeze in place and incinerate. Meanwhile he would still be falling for a considerable time since he is at a superposition meaning he is both dead and alive at the same time, theoretically speaking. The size of animals still blows my mind. You can read about how a manta ray is 23 feet long and 3 tons but it doesn't really hit you until you realize that's heavier than most cars. If some sort of super advanced alien species on a planet 80 million light years away from Earth built a high-tech telescope that let them see objects on the Earth's surface, they would be seeing dinosaurs right now. If two pieces of the same type of metal touch in space, they will bond and be permanently stuck together. It's called space welding, cold welding. I recently read about the split brain experiments. There is a procedure for severe epilepsy that involves cutting the connecting nerves of the two brain hemispheres, resulting in the two hemispheres being unable to communicate with each other. The experiment shows that both halves can answer questions independently of each other, have separate opinions slash preferences, form memories independently basically suggesting that there are two minds in the brain. That just blows my mind. Caterpillars basically dissolve into liquid in the cocoon. The only thing left are the so-called imaginal discs, groups of cells that contain all the information and the mechanism to turn that soup into the various body parts of a butterfly, the same applies for other insects. There are actually blood vessels obstructing light from reaching certain areas in your eye, effectively creating a shadow. Your brain filters this out and essentially fills in the gaps so you don't actually see this spider web like network of black lines. However, you can visualize them by shining a light at a diagonal into your eye, not directly, and gently wiggling it about. This means your brain doesn't have enough time to filter it out and you see this spider web like network of blood vessels. Technical instructions to clarify the actions involved.
I find it easier to see this effect in a dark environment, so the contrast of the black shadow against the light is higher. You want to be staring straight ahead and shining the light into your pupil at a 45 degree angle from the side directed at your nose at about 10 to 20 centimeters away from them. Phone light will do great and have it on the dimmest setting if possible. Then wiggle the light in gentle 1 centimeter movement side to side. Keep this up for about a second at least and you should see them. Hope this clears it up a bit. The strongest known acid is called fluoroantimonic acid and it is made by combining a solution of two different ions in various quantities. Without going too crazy into the scientific details, the part that blows my mind is that at certain ratios of the two ingredients you can get an acid that is 1 quadrillion times stronger than 100% pure sulfuric acid. At acidity levels like this pH fails to even be a useful metric, as the pH of any solution would certainly be less than zero. Additionally, it is so acidic that it can force carbon atoms to have five bonds instead of four, breaking one of the fundamental principles of organic chemistry. Tumors can grow teeth and eyes. When you lose weight it leaves out of your breath. So when people lose 100 pounds or 50 kilograms, they have exhaled that much carbon. Echidnas and platypus are the only two animals that lay eggs and also produce milk. This means they are also the only animals that can make their own custard. If you lock yourself up in an opaque cube, a four-dimensional being could still see you. The knowledge that the atoms of our bodies contain elements only forged in the center of stars, and that such stars upon death blow the elements via supernova across the universe and into our very existence. We are made of stardust. With the help of quantum tunneling, there is a 1 in 5.2 to the power of 61 chance that the molecules in your hand and table would miss each other when slamming it, making your hand go through the table. Ice doesn't cool your water, the water heats up your ice, energy transfers one way. When I realized this studying thermodynamics, I sat and just let it hit me. I friggin love chemistry. When you look at the sky at night, there is something visible to the human eye that is not even in our galaxy. It's 2.5 million light years from our galaxy, and we can still see it without any assistance. For reference, the Milky Way itself is 100k light years across. Tilda the Andromeda Galaxy is the only thing outside our galaxy the human eyes can see. Tilda. The fact that we can see something that far away, and that Tilda it is the single solitary thing Tilda we can see outside our home galaxy, blows my mind. Edit, my memory has been corrected. There are other things outside the galaxy we can see unaided, but they are closer. For example, Magellanic Cloud. A hummingbird beats its wings 12 times a second. We still to this day don't know how eels come to be. Their reproduction is still based in theory. As far as we know, Mars is the only planet to be inhabited entirely by robots. Black holes are damn near impossible to notice unless next to a light source. We know that they roam around sometimes and are even harder to detect, basically meaning a black hole could eat us with no warning. Sharks are older than trees. Also, trees almost killed all land life on Earth as there used to be nothing that could decompose them, so dead trees covered the ground and killed all other vegetation. Only once fungus evolved did trees start decomposing. The period in which this occurred was known as the Carboniferous Period. Fungus had evolved long before this, around 600 million years before, but it had not evolved the ability to decompose trees due to them evolving during this period. These first trees were actually more closely related to ferns and reproduced via spores rather than seeds. Also, these trees would not have killed all land life, sorry to disappoint, due to wildfires clearing out the dead trees. That said, the lack of decomposing fungi, which use up oxygen in the decomposition process, and the extremely high number of photosynthesizing plants lead to very high oxygen levels during this period, as high as 15% higher than modern levels. This allowed the insects of the time to grow to massive sizes. Insects have a fairly inefficient respiratory system, so without high oxygen levels it's difficult for them to grow to large sizes. Now you might be asking how large? Well, dragonflies were the size of hawks, spiders were the size of house cats and millipedes were as long as 8 feet. Truly a fascinating point in our planet's history. There are some ice age animals that are so perfectly preserved in permafrost that scientists have been able to find them still with all their soft tissue, hair, and organs. They even found a couple mammoths that still had liquid blood in them and I remember one scientist even tasting the mammoth meat. Also there was a mummy found in China that was so well preserved that she still had all her skin, hair, organs, etc. Her body was even flexible that you could bend her limbs as if she was alive. They even found her last meal still in her stomach and could perform an autopsy on her to tell you why she died. She died over 2000 years before she was found. 
Without the development of genuinely sci-fi travel technology like wormholes or hyperspace, which may not even be possible 99.99% of the universe will be forever locked off from us. Because of cosmic expansion, the various galactic clusters are moving away from our local cluster faster than we could ever catch up to them. A million seconds is 12 days. A billion seconds is 31 years. A trillion seconds is 31,688 years. All matter literally gives off light, but we can only see a sliver of that spectrum, although we do have tools to help us see other spectrums. Our bodies give off infrared, and are basically glowing in that portion of the spectrum similar to how iron glows to our normal vision when it's heated. Something that sees a different spectrum than us might not see hot iron as glowing at the same temperatures we see iron glow at. Fat cells do not burn or disappear, they just shrink. T-Rex lived 66 millionish years ago. Stegosaurus lived 155 millionish years ago. The gap between Rex and Stego is 16 millionish greater than between Rex and present day. The astronauts on the ISS aren't floating around because of lack of gravity, far from it. They are in constant free fall, falling over the horizon of Earth, being pulled by gravity towards the Earth. The moon is just large enough, and just far enough away from Earth, to be able to create full eclipses. Exponential power, fold a big sheet of paper, that is 0.1 millimeters thick, 50 times and the height of stack is over 20 times the distance Earth to Moon, thank you. We've never actually seen what the entire Milky Way looks like since we're located inside it. The cosmic horizon, there's vast swathes of space we will never be able to see or know anything about as space is expanding faster than the speed of light. There is one that always leaves me pondering what could have been. There was a time in Arabia, at the time the Khwarazmian Empire, when mathematicians were doing great work and making massive advances in science, basically Arabic numerals and such. They nearly had a kind of renaissance 300 years before the Italian one. It even got to the point where the popularity of Islam started to wane slightly in favor of advances in science in this region. One day three diplomats were sent to this kingdom from the Mongol Empire in an attempt to stop a war before it had time to take off. The Shah had one of the diplomats beheaded and the other two publicly humiliated. Big mistake doesn't even cover it. Genghis Khan, upon hearing of this stops a war he was having with China to march all the way to Arabia and absolutely massacres the Khwarazmian Empire. A survivor reportedly pleaded to Allah in front of Genghis to which he said, if your God truly cared for you, he would not have sent me. Their empire was assimilated into the Mongol Empire and Genghis put the fear of God in them so much their work was destroyed and they abandoned most of their scientific pursuits going back to a more religious-based society, out of superstitious fear, as a fault of Genghis's ominous statement. Which is why ultra-conservative Islam is still so prevalent in that area today. That if a man were to take out all his intestines and stretch them out over an American football field, they would die. The fact that we are all dead in practical terms for forever. We were not alive for billions of years before birth, and we will be dead for billions of years after death with only a blink of conscious existence in deep time. As Mark Twain put it, I had been dead for billions and billions of years before I was born, and had not suffered the slightest inconvenience from it. The concept of beauty, that we sit in a world that is so complicated and crazy and our brains pick some types of organization in the chaos and really like it. The existence of the male blanket octopus was very hard to prove. The female blanket octopus is 4000x larger than the male blanket octopus, who dies after mating. But before scientists knew this, they spent all their time looking for male blanket octopi by scanning for large fellas, when they should have been looking for walnut-sized fellas. There were multiple homo species living together around 30,000 years ago. The rest died out, Neanderthals, Desovians, etc. Now only homo sapiens remain. Would have been cool to have our brother and sister species still around. The reason our fingertips get wrinkly when submerged underwater for a longer period of time is because we have evolved to be able to get a better grip on things underwater. I don't know, I just think that's a really cool fact. The universe is about 13 billion years old, but about 93 billion light years across. Both the absolute hottest and absolute coldest temperatures ever recorded in the known universe were achieved here on Earth. The hottest temperature ever physically recorded in the known universe was when scientists at CERN used the Large Hadron Collider to collide lead ions. This produced a temperature flash of 5.5 trillion degrees Celsius. Convert to Fahrenheit, and you get this. 9.9 .9 trillion deg. For the record, the current temperature at the core of our sun is around 15 million degrees Celsius. That's 350,000 times less intense than the flash produced by the lead ion particle collisions. That temperature, 
even if minuscule and fleeting in size and duration, was actually created here on Earth, in a lab. Let that sink in. The coldest temperature ever recorded in the known universe was achieved relatively recently by a group of German researchers who achieved a nearly incomprehensible feat of 38 trillionths of a degree above minus 273.15 deg, or more commonly known as absolute zero degrees Kelvin. They did this by dropping magnetized gas down a nearly 400-foot tower in order to study a fifth state of matter, Bose-Einstein condensate. For the record, weird stuff starts to happen near absolute zero degrees Kelvin. Example? Light turns into a liquid you can pour into a glass. The coldest place we have recorded data from within our observable universe is the Boomerang Nebula, hovering nearly an entire degree, Kelvin, above absolute zero. Still unfathomably cold. So while we are still essentially infinity away from achieving Planck temperature, the staggeringly high temperature of beyond decillions of degrees Celsius in which conventional physics breaks down and we enter a whole new realm of theoretics, we are extremely, extremely close to achieving absolute zero here on Earth.